I'd like to talk about our design study based on theoretical and experimental examination. It uh, the uh, who guided the wave optical microphone with a diaphragm. Here is the outline of this talk. After a brief introduction, I'll show the microphone structure and its principle of operation. Then I'd like to talk about two main topics. The design guideline of the uh, design guideline of microphone and damping of diaphragm vibration. Finally, I'll offer a conclusion. Our guided wave optical microphone has three unique features. Photonic sensing, the use of integrated optic configuration, and the use of micromechanical structures. Principle sensing especially provides the following advantage, immunity to electromagnetic interference and the impossibility of electrical leak. So the guided wave optical microphone can be used even in a harsh environment such as an MRI scanner room and industrial plants without any special protec protection against electromagnetic interference or electrical leak. By the way, sensitivity and frequency range are very important sophistication of the microphone. These sophistication are strongly suggested to dependent on waveguide location and diaphragm dimensions. In order to establish a design guideline of the microphone, such dependence must be identified theoretically and experimentally. Moreover, damping of the diaphragm must be realized to suppress the resonance and to achieve a broad frequency range. This figure shows a um, guided wave optical microphone. It consists of rectangular diaphragm as a pressure sensitive structure and single mode optical waveguide across the diaphragm. To reduce the diffraction effect of the sound wave, a plate with a small hole is attached to the microphone so that only one face of the diaphragm is exposed to the sound pressure. The microphone is built use, using two glasses. There is the calling 0211 glass and six solderline glass with a square hole. The microphone is placed to between a pair of cross polarizers. The input polarizer is oriented at 45 degrees with respect to the microphone surface. The right beam from the polarizer is coupled to the fundamental TM-like and T-like modes at equal intensities. When sound pressure is applied, the index change due to the elast optic effect produced phase difference between the two guided modes in the waveguide. The phase modulated light is finally converted into intensity modulated light by the output polarizer. Next, let me move on to the first main topic, that is design guideline of the microphone. The topic consists of three parts, sensitivity, resonance frequency, and a helpful chart diagram to design the diagram. Sensitivity is dependent on waveguide position since the induced strain is not uniformly distributed. Also, sensitivity is related to the diaphragm dimension because rigidity of the diaphragm is a function of its side length and thickness. Determination of these dependence is important to establish a guideline for designing the sensor. Here are the 
theoretical and experimental results of sensitivity dependence on waveguide position for fabricated microphone with a 10 millimeter square. Um, 0.22 millimeter thick diagram. In the graph, the dots denote the fabricate uh, measured phase sensitivity and the solid line represents the theoretical prediction. The phase sensitivity is defined as an um, induced phase difference per unit pressure. The measured sensitivity agrees well with the theoretical one. And the diaphragm edge can be determined to be the best waveguide position to maximize the sensitivity. Sensitivity at the center of the diaphragm is also found to relatively high. In order to examine sensitivity dependence on diaphragm thickness, four microphone, uh, sorry. The left hand figure shows calculated and measured sensitivities as a function of the diaphragm sequence. From, from the figure, the measured sensitivities agree well with the theoretical sensitivity. The slope of this line is minus two in a log log graph. So that way sensitivity is found to the inversely proportional to the square of the diaphragm sequence. In the right hand figure, calculated and measured sensitivities shows as a function of the side length of diaphragm. The slope of this line is three in a row row graph. So where sensitivity is found to be proportional to the cube of the side length of diaphragm. Here are brief conclusions regarding dependence of sensitivity and resonance frequency on diaphragm dimensions. Regarding resonance frequency, which limits the frequency range of the microphone, I'm sorry that I can't show detail due to the limited presentation time. But according to the results, the resonance frequency is found to be proportional to the diaphragm sequence and inversely proportional to the square of the side length of the diaphragm. These findings provide a useful chart diagram when designing a guided wave optical microphone, which can be seen in the next slide. You can see an example of our original chart diagram here. This diaphragm, diagram is valid for waveguide position at the center of the diaphragm. In the figure, calculated trajectories of equal sensitivities are shown as solid line on the side length sequence plane. Also, calculated trajectories of equal resonance frequency are shown as dashes. Using this diagram, Diaphragm dimensions can be determined from the desired sensitivity and frequency range. To design a microphone of which sensitivity and resonance frequency are one mil radian per pascal and 10 kilohertz respectively, you first must find the line corresponding to desired value From the intense intersection of the two lines, the side lengths of diaphragm can be determined to <coughs> about five millimeter. Um, diaphragm thickness is about 30 micrometer. Let me move on to damping of diaphragm vibration. Now, I'll give you a brief review of separation of resonant vibration and some experimental results. Frequency response is an important sophistication of microphone. Without damping, resonance, resonance generally appeared, appeared in frequency response as this black line. So output signal is emphasized around 
the resonance frequency in order to obtain broader flat frequency response. Damping of the vibrating plate is essential to properly suppress the resonance like this red line. In conventional condenser microphones, squeeze film air damping is often used as a damping mechanism. In this damping, damping force is yielded by a change in pressure of the air layer due to viscosity of air. In this study, squeeze film air damping was introduced and its effect was considered for microphones with different thickness of the air film layer. The graph on the left side shows a transient output for a microphone with air film thickness of 0.2 mm. After the applied sound was momentarily turned off. You can see a decaying sinusoidal signal due to the damping effect. According to the cow fitting, the damping ratio was evaluated to be 0.027. Although it is quite smaller than the optimized value of 0.707. Moreover, you can evaluate the damping ratio from frequency response around the resonance frequency. As shown is the right hand graph. The straight line the straight line represents the calculated curve with a damping ratio of 0.015. Since the curve agrees well with the measured data, damping ratio is evaluated to be 0.015. Evaluated damping ratio for several air film thickness are shown in this table. Damping ratio found was found to increase as air film thickness decreases. Similar to the rough theoretical prediction that the damping ratio is proportional to air film thickness. Here are the conclusions from this talk. Thank you for your attention.